should have a sentry outside it? Bless you, my son. Rather unresponsive, anti-clerical, perhaps. I say, bless you. <coughs> Strong, silent man. Would you like some fruit? It's very hot here. This seems to be carrying military modesty a bit far. Some kind people have just given me a melon, some bread, and some juice. Will you have some? Oh, he must be deaf. I say, will you have some? Oh, he must be dead. Where is your father? Will it be proper use of philosophic language? Say that he is dead? One school of thinkers would doubtless declare dogmatically that the thing cannot be dead if it has never been alive. Others of a more mechanistic school may hold that a thing is alive because it gives the material manifestations of life, as he would do when he's wrong up. Anyhow, we will admit that he's a model soldier in quite an incorruptible sense. Who is he? Do you know him? Yes, I knew him before he was made. Oh, but have mercy on us. He's a dummy. Uh, for the present, for the present. And so I bring him to life. Who are you, in the name of God? Is this magic? Have no fear. It is not magic, but machine. Though I swear it walks and talks like a man. But who are you? My name matters nothing now. Perhaps it may be known someday. You have the honor of sir, to be conversing with the master puppet maker of the world, who has made marionettes to move without wires and to speak human speech as melodiously as a musical box. What scenery there is, I paint. What plays there are, I write. I make them all, and the story for which they are made. I'm like a little god in my own mimic world. Do not forget the real god or the real world. Do not misunderstand me. I'm not one of those who lightly sneer at our fathers in faith. The real world is very serious, and doubtless it is very right that it should worship a serious God. But inside that box on wheels, but not outside it, there is a very noble and happy universe. All my creatures behave with majesty and magnanimity, grow virtue always conquers. And when I come out of my theater into this wicked world, I think the world is small, as well as wicked, and the truth is smaller than the tale. You know what has made the world small and wicked? I only know who has made my own puppet spirit, so that even if they are wicked, they're never small. Come, we have talked enough of theory. This time you should see something of them. Two noble and high-born ladies, both of dazzling beauty. One you may notice, fair and full-blooded, Frank and rather resolute expression. Something of a fighter, perhaps too much of a ruler. The other you observe, darker in coloring and more subtle in appeal, touched with an elfin strangeness and fretted within by the pale flame of the mystics. But which is which? That father, you will learn when you have paid for your seat. Expansive youth, all in gilded armor. That father is one of the mightiest heroes, one of the most adventurous kings of history. He conquers half Asia when he's wound up. With the guard, you've already been an more conversation. And that is really all. But who is this unfortunate scarecrow, all in rags and tatter? That is a distinguished man of letters, a representative poet and author, like myself. Oh, I see. Come, the play is very short. And it would be an act of charity. Ah, sit down, sit down. Have you ever seen a play? I have seen a miracle play. Have you ever seen a miracle? Yes, I have seen a miracle. And you worked the miracle? No man can work a miracle. The atheists are often right. It is God who works miracles. But he worked it through you. Ever since you came here, I've known that the air has changed as to burning transparency. This paradise we're making through, as if you make the trees walk or the horses by caravan grow wings. <laughs> or tell me into one of my own puppets. It would be a mortal sin to do that, if anyone could do it. Only witches or wicked sorcerers make men captive by their enchantment, 
and imprison them in beasts or birds, or turn them into stone statues. God's miracles always free men from captivity and give them back their bodies. What do you hear about confession? Even if it is my puppets who confess? What do you mean? Well, you see my play. It is parents for my confession. As every you know how it is, there's a lot of rich and trade. The poets never tell the truth, except when we tell them fables. I should try to tell the truth, but I would always be weighed down with the thought of how little I had to tell. But these clockwork dolls will tell you the truth about me. Come, Father, I have a reason, and I really want you to see my play. What is the name of your play? It is called The Surprise, but I fear you will not be very much surprised at it. It is not only very, but very simple. It's sort of old fashioned play where we have to be for rustics and county affairs. That is the sort of play it is, and thank God it's so soon. Yet, there's a question to ask you. A question after the play. Do you mean a question about the play? No, I mean a question about the playwright. A question about me. It might possibly be put in the form, have I gone mad? Or perhaps in the other form, please sir, may I go mad? Will you work a miracle and turn me into a lunatic instead of a stone statue? Father, I speak in your notes until you see my play. Will you see my play? Yes, I will hear your confession. Sit down on this green bank and you shall not pay for your seat. 